Hi, my name is Alan Medler, and I'm the lead author of the paper Query Suggestions A Summarization in Exploratory Search. This is joint work with Jing Li and Dorota Glowaka, and we're all from the University of Helsinki in Finland. In our paper, we wanted to understand how query suggestions impact users performing exploratory search. Exploratory search involves search activities where the goal is to discover or learn new information. This can encompass situations where there is search domain uncertainty, where we don't know what documents are available to us, for example, or uncertainty with how we're going to achieve our search goals, maybe if we're in the process of learning about unfamiliar topics. There is prior work on using uh, query suggestions in exploratory search, but this is focused on areas where there is search domain uncertainty. In the two main studies we found, purchasing a VoIP telephone and identifying topically relevant newspaper articles, users would have been able to leverage their existing knowledge of, for example, cellular phones, to assess the relevance of query suggestions when purchasing a VoIP telephone. But it is unclear whether these findings generalized to knowledge acquisition tasks, such as scientific literature search. We think these situations are different because knowledge acquisition is more cognitively demanding and we're expecting users to be learning from and synthesizing new information. Secondly, users are going to be uncertain about the relevance of individual documents presented to them. And as a result of that, they're going to scroll through far more search results than they would otherwise have done in situations where they would have more specific domain knowledge. First of all, what do query suggestions look like? Query suggestions are queries that are displayed alongside search results. Here we have an example from Google where the query how to keep bees has resulted in us getting some query suggestions at the bottom of the results page. These query suggestions can either be follow-on queries or are reformulations of the same query. Um, and an example, um, an example of follow-on queries is bee keep, keeping bees for beginners so it has been made a little bit more specific. And an example of query, query reformulations is beekeeping. So I obviously lacked the specialist vocabulary to transform my query into that more succinct form. Query suggestions, at least in web search, are usually generated from query logs. But there are methods that don't require logs, uh, such as those based on pseudo-relevance feedback or concept hierarchies. Our work is inspired by more recent approaches based on word embeddings. These approaches have the advantage that they can easily generate semantically similar queries to the original search query. But, as we have said before, users performing exploratory search are going to scroll through significantly more search results. So the query suggestions are not going to be relevant to documents lower down the relevance ranking um, than uh, that are currently on screen. Our approach consists of two main components. The first component generates query suggestions using an embedding model of search engine results pages. So instead of identifying semantically similar queries to the original search query, we're going to generate query suggestions on the basis of what search results are currently on screen. We refer to these as alternative queries to distinguish them from query reformulation that, if it does take into account document contents, only considers those at the top of the ranking. We believe this is interesting because these query suggestions are independent of the original search query and as a result will function like keyword summaries of the documents that are currently on screen. And in doing so, what it does is answer the following question for the user, which is, what am I looking at right now? Which shows them whether they've scrolled past all the documents that are relevant to their search intent. We combined uh, this query suggestion method with a search interface based on infinite scroll. This allows us to change the displayed um, suggestions dynamically and users are then able to see where in the ranking search results start to become less relevant. This is our search interface. Users initiate a search with a textual search query and we retrieve search results ranked by OCAPIBM25. Each document can be bookmarked by the user and recalled later. And the query suggestions are anchored to the right margin and suggestions can be clicked on to initiate a new search. We implement infinite scroll by fetching additional search results before the user reaches the bottom of the page. And we update query suggestions dynamically on the basis of what documents are currently visible. We identify queries that would retrieve similar documents to those currently on screen using an embedding model, which we refer to as the SERP embedding model. 
This embedding model is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence autoencoder consisting of two LSTM networks, an encoder network and a decoder network. The model is trained by minimizing the reconstruction error between the input to the encoder network and the output from the decoder network. In doing so, this allows us to use the final hidden state output from the encoder network as a learned representation of the results page, which we refer to as a SERP embedding. This network was trained on a collection of 70,000 artificially generated search results pages from a corpus of computer science papers from archive. And we use data augmentation to further increase the number of training examples to around 300,000. The SERP embedding model forms the backbone of our alternative uh, query generation method. First, um, we convert the visible search results to Dr. Vec embeddings. These are then fed into the LSTM encoder network to generate a SERP embedding. We then identify the nearest neighbors in the embedding space and rank these by their distance to the SERP embedding um, for the currently uh, visible search results. We then replace these with the queries that we use to generate them and repeat the whole procedure every time the visible set of documents changes. Lastly, we post-process the query suggestions because we noticed that their quality degraded as a function of term co-occurrence in the document corpus. We do this by generating query suggestions using the pseudo-relevance feedback mechanism as well and blend together the semantic query suggestions from our embedding model with the lexical query suggestions from the pseudo-relevance feedback method using a logistic regression model. There are many more details about this procedure in the paper. In our evaluation, we performed both an expert assessment of the quality of query suggestions and a user study of how they impact users performing scientific literature search. In this talk, we're only going to cover the expert assessment very quickly. So we were interested in how our query suggestions generalized to SERPs that were not present in our training data. And to do this, we focused on situations where users were searching for documents uh, with multiple topics, such as computer vision and autonomous driving. Now, both of these queries were in our training data, but taken together as a single query, they weren't. What we found is that whereas the pseudo-relevance feedback methods performed comparatively poorly in terms of overall precision, the SERP embed embedding model identifies more relevant SERP query suggestions. And our method that blends the two together performs best overall. We also looked at a measure of fairness because we want to get suggestions related to both computer vision and suggestions related to autonomous driving in this example. And again, our method performed the best. There are lots more results related to this in the paper. So for the remainder of the talk, I'm going to talk about our user study, where we compared our method with query suggestions with a baseline system without those suggestions, but was otherwise exactly the same. We had 19 participants in the study, which we recruited from the computer science department, of which approximately half were female. All participants used both systems, and we situated them in an essay writing scenario where they had to write a short essay draft on an unfamiliar topic that we provided to them. This was to create a situation where users would be forced to perform exploratory search. The document corpus that they could search contained 170,000 computer science papers from the archive repository, the participants were allowed a maximum of 30 minutes for each search session, but were given additional time to finalize their essay drafts. After participants used each system, they answered the SUSE questionnaire and a modified rescue questionnaire. And after they had used both systems, they answered a post-experiment questionnaire and we conducted a semi-structured interview. We also collected lots of behavioral data, such as what queries were issued and what query suggestions were shown to users. And finally, their essays were graded on a 1 to 5 scale by two independent markers for which the inter-rater agreement was 0.82. In terms of task performance, every participant used both systems. And when using the system with query suggestions, we found that they inspected far fewer documents per query, that they issued more search queries overall, and in aggregate, were exposed to more documents, um, even though on average search sessions took the same amount of time. Finally, when we, ass we assume because they were exposed to more documents, they went on to produce higher quality essays 
than users of the system without query suggestions. Uh, there was no significant difference between the number of documents bookmarked, and we noted that query suggestions accounted for approximately half of the queries issued overall, obviously in the system with query suggestions. We used the SUS and the modified rescue questionnaire to assess the usability of our systems. With the SUS questionnaire, even though we scored higher than the baseline, the difference was not statistically significant. Whereas the rescue questionnaire, there was a significant difference, so here we're going to focus on those results. Some things I'd like to point out um, is that users of the query suggestion system were more confident that the documents recommended to them matched what they were searching for. Now remember, the search components of the systems are identical. The only difference is whether there were query suggestions or not. So we believe users understood better that documents matched what they were searching for because of the additional summarization information from the query suggestions. And secondly, they found it easier to notice whether search results were not correct anymore because, they, because as they scrolled down the search results, the query suggestions changed to highlight this fact. In terms of user perception, we found that a majority of users preferred uh, the system with query suggestions over the one without. And they felt that the inclusion of these suggestions enhanced their search session. More importantly, um, a majority agreed that the query suggestions reassured users that search results were relevant to their search goals. But interestingly, only half of the participants thought that suggestions made good follow-up queries. But this was not the main goal of our system, so we were less concerned with this. As a kind of secondary concern, we were worried that people might find not just the fact that the query suggestions themselves might be distracting, but the way in which we animated them, changing their positions and the lengths of the bars to indicate our confidence in them, might be distracting. But no one found their presence distracting, and only a few people found the animations distracting. In summary, while there was previous studies related to using query suggestions in exploratory search, we felt that these studies were designed around less cognitively demanding tasks than the knowledge, ac knowledge acquisition tasks you would find in scientific literature search. And we discovered that when applied in this setting, they could have a quite dramatic effect on user behavior and their perception of the search system. Participants highlighted query suggestion summarization properties so their confidence that search results match what they were searching for and how easy it was to see whether search results were not correct anymore, rather than use them as follow-on queries. And finally, in future work, we want to use our SERP embedding method, not in a live system, but as a method to help us analyze search logs and uh, user search behavior. Well, thank you for listening to this presentation and we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have during the conference. Thanks for listening.